Hello crafty friends, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. I am taking this Dollar Tree item. It's, I believe it's a six by six canvas. And I'm just going to be taking off the canvas design that was on this frame. And then we'll be using the frame. Uh, taking those staples out can be a little tricky. And I was able to get half of them out. One side had them. I don't know why they didn't come out as well as the other. Um, preferably, if you could get the staples out, then when you're putting in your own staples, it'll work a lot better. This is just a fabric piece from Dollar, no, I mean Walmart, and it's a Pioneer Woman. And I'm just going to use that canvas as a guide and cut down the fabric, trim the corners, and I ironed it all out so it could fit over the the frame just the same as the canvas did. And then just go ahead and place it in, staple it down. And then I kind of tucked in the corners the way they had it, so then it looked nice and neat. I've been looking for ideas on how to use this pretty, pretty fabric, and this B project was perfect for this. I think if a person didn't have a staple gun, you could, you know, glue this down and that would work as well. If I were to glue it, I think I would, you know, cover it with something on the back just to make it look nice. All right. Now, so I'm I've got this all done. I've even hammered some of those down the uh, staples. And look at this cute stencil. I can put a link as to where I found them. And I just am using it. It looked like it was pretty cut pretty square from the manufacturer. So I'm just going to use um, a knife and or a exacto knife and I'm going to cut it out of this the foam board that you can get through Dollar Tree. And I just took my time so you can get it nice and straight. If you needed to, you could use a ruler to really get it nice and straight. And then I'm just going with some sanding, you know, it's just an emery board. Um, and then I'm just going to get those edges nice and smooth. And that is going to become my, my canvas or platform to do some stenciling. And just going to put on some of my blue tape to keep it down and going to start stenciling. I just love stenciling. It is so much fun. It's great because you can change up the colors and do different things with it. And it looks so different, you know, when you can uh, change the colors and even sometimes you eliminate things and make something different or use just a portion of the stencil. So this is just your black and I do have a stencil brush and I'm going to use a circular technique to get in and put that black in those uh, spaces. If you make sure things are very, very dry, you know, as far as there's not a lot of ink, it works just fine. The circular technique is something I learned years ago. And they had special, um, it was kind of like in a, wasn't, uh, what do I want to say? It was uh, kind of a paste, actually. And it was really thick paint. And it worked great. And I, it seemed like it was a little oily, too. And that was kind of when the days of stenciling was um, really big into where we'd stencil on the, the walls and put borders up and things like that. So I'm just using good old chalk paint here. Just make sure it's very dry and it works just as just as well. And then I did pull out a couple markers because I wanted to have a red heart. And then for those cute little bees up at the top in the corners, um, making the red heart. 
and then I'm just doing the bees black and, and yellow. And I just used a marker just because it's just too hard to get in there with a, you know, a paintbrush and make it nice. This was very enjoyable. I had lots of fun with it. I do have more stencils and I'm going to be making more videos using stencils. And I just wanted to, you know, I started with some brown on the little beehive because I wanted it to have a little dimension. And so um, starting with the edges, doing brown, and then I'm going to go back over it with some of the yellow. And I believe it's called King's Gold, and that wasn't a chalk paint. It was just an acrylic. And going to um, lighten that in the center of it just to give it a little dimension. And again, just circular motion and holding that just as tight as I can. That King's Gold by Apple Barrel is such a pretty gold. I've used that with so many things. Uh, it's uh, just one of my go-to yellows because it's very farmhouse. And as you can see, it looks great for honey or, you know, a cute little beehive, bees. I don't know. It's just such a nice color. I love it. I have got another stencil. I almost wanted to use that one. I couldn't resist when I was buying these. It says, be nice or buzz off. I think that's what it said. But I thought, you know, I'm gonna give this to my daughter Paige and she kind of picked this one out. She loved it. And so I was like, yeah, well, uh, I'm gonna pass this down to her. I've got so much decor, as you can imagine, with all this stuff that I, I don't know what to do with it all. But um, she happily accepted this and is going to put this up on her wall because she loves bees and honey and things like that. It's just kind of her style. So just putting this down, I debated whether to put this down with a little bit of uh, E6000. It wouldn't be a bad plan, but it stuck on there just fine. And it needed something. And so um, I decided to... Um, put a little um, string on there, the jute, jute string, twine, whatever you, you call it, and I'm going to just bring it down and make a little bow with it. Even though I, you know, sanded those edges, it just needed a little something. And jute twine, that looks great with anything beehive related. This is how it turned out. I am very happy with how it turned out. My daughter, when I gave it to her, she really liked it too. And such a nice stencil. I can use this again and again and again. Good quality stuff. DIY number three, or should I say BIY? So here I've just got an old bottle that was little or nothing. I think I picked it up at a thrift store for a dime. I do want my chalk paint to stick well, so I'm just cleaning it with some alcohol, making sure the oils are off, and then it dries really fast. And then I'm just going to put on. Um, it actually was just like two layers of the chalk paint. I'm using Waverly for this. So allow that to dry. And then I'm just gonna get out my stamping techniques. I've been using that and I'm really enjoying that. And I dug through my things and I found a honeybee stamp. 
This one is um, retired from the Stampin' Up. And then I'm using the Stays On ink. And I'm just going with that just because it, uh, it just seems to work really well when you're putting it on these surfaces. And normally you'd use a block, but since this is, um, you know, a rounded surface, then I'm just going to use my hands and be really careful and make sure that I've applied pressure everywhere on that little bee. And it's kind of a, well, here we go, and you press it down and roll it on, and you've got it there, and you're just pressing on all the spots and hoping that you got everything. And voila, it turned out really nice. And then I had this uh, stencil, uh, I can't think of, um, Holtz, Tim, yeah, the Holtz one. Um, so it was a pack of three, I believe it was, and just putting it on the one side, I'm using the, not the inside of it, but the image itself, or, you know, just so it looks like it's got some honeycomb on there. You'll see what I mean. And just pressing that down. And I don't want it super solid. I just kind of want a little look to it. See how it's kind of coming around there. And it needed a little more. So I'm just playing around and getting a little bit of that honeycomb look to it. So if you're new to crafting, you know, purchasing these things, it takes, you know, years to accumulate. But if you're a true crafter, you've got a nice little stash of this and that. And when you get the, you know, desire to make something, you usually have something that'll work so you can embellish your projects. And here I'm using the maize color in Waverly chalk paint, and I'm just going to paint these cute little beads. I have a neat idea on what to do for this cute little decor piece. And I believe I've talked about this too. I have this pretty uh, fabric. Now you can use fabric and you know it's, you know, rip it, cut it, whatever, and you can make your own size of ribbon. It's not um, sewn on the edges, but when you're doing farmhouse and shabby chic, that kind of thing, you don't want it perfect anyway. And it's so much cheaper than buying ribbon. So now I've got that all strung on there and I'm just gonna wind it around and make a nice pretty bow and see how I glued that down and this thing is not going anywhere. Took me a little bit to get that bow just how I wanted it, trim the edges, and then I was with my friend and we were at a, um, just a little boutique and I picked up these pretty flowers. It's got a little bit of different texture. Um, and then, so I'll show you in the next clip that uh, it's a little different than what you'd get at Dollar Tree. The flowers are more like a fabric and I just love them. And I thought this would be perfect for this cute little vase. And since they're kind of a fabric thing, I wanted it to just stay in there nice. It kept popping up. And so I'm just gluing them down. I don't think anyone's ever going to take them out. And just kind of stuck them in there. Aren't these just darling? And here it is. I love how this turned out. I told my daughter, if you don't like this, I'll totally take this off your hands. And she said, no, Mom, I like it. <laughs> Could you see this with like a little cow or something? You could do this with many different things. Here's just how they all turned out. I'm very pleased with it. I love it. I want to thank you all for taking time to watch my video. I'm really enjoying this. 
and I'm wishing you a very wonderful day. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.